Oh, this is literally a D1 thorn. Look at these sights. Ooh. Look at the aimed out sight speed. It feels like a snapshot. That's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. That's a three tap. Good range right there as well. Three taps consistently. We're looking at more players here. Left side. He burned out, I think. I believe that's going to burn him out. I just shot an extra bullet because I didn't think I was going to get that. Yo, we just went off. Yo, we just went off. What? Yo, we just went off. We're still going. He's gonna burn out? No, he didn't burn out. Yo, we're going off right now. Let's keep this going. Yo, let's go. We're going off. You continue to be my greatest success, Guardian. We can get that perk and get a two tap, hopefully. That's three. That's four. Yo, give me that, baby. Let's go. Give me a challenge. Oh my god. Imagine, dude. We can still go, though. We can still keep going. We can still keep going. Yo, let's go, baby. <laughs> nice. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Frostbolt and welcome to the video. I'm super excited to showcase some gameplay and talk about the returning weapon from Destiny 1, Thorn. But before we do that, let me just take a second to say thank you so much for 50,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. I really appreciate you guys for supporting, dropping a like, and dropping comments. Even though I'm not able to respond to every single comment, I do see them. They all mean so much to me. They honestly make my day better and they bring me, you know, some joy to my life. So thank you so much. I'm excited to continue creating more content for Destiny and other games that I might be interested in. Now, there's going to be some merch in the future pretty soon uh, with my branding and stuff like that. If you're interested, I will let you know in the future videos. But anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Thorn. This exotic handkin is a 150 RPM archetype that comes with the following perks. Mark of the Devourer. Rounds pierce targets and deal damage over time. Kills with his weapon, leave behind remnants. And I'll explain what that does here in a second. Next, we have Corkscrew Rifling. And then we have Accurized Rounds for the range because it needs it. And the special perk, Soul of the Devourer. Absorbing a remnant strengths Mark of the Devourer and partially refills the magazine. So basically, every time you kill an enemy guardian, they're going to leave behind an orb, a soul, and you don't even have to pick it up directly. It has about a 15 meter radius and it'll come straight after you. What happens after that is that the burn tick that's 2 damage turns into 7, which means that your hand cannon basically goes from 3 tapping players to 2 tapping them. Now, I'm going to explain the damage values here for you so you can understand what that means. If an enemy guardian has 5 resilience, you can hit 2 headshots and 1 body shot and expect to kill them. Now, if you have the perk proc, you can land two headshots and expect to kill them, okay? Now, keep in mind, there's going to be some range drop-off values at the time, so it won't always be like that, you know, across the map, mid-range, so don't be surprised. Now, if the enemy player has over, you know, five resilience being six, you are going to have to land three headshots, and you can still two-tap to the head with a perk, okay? Now the final perk is texture grip. Now this is just going to help you with stability and I'm going to tell you right now the stability seems pretty good at least on PC 
Handling speed is super, super good. It feels like it has snapshot and you pull your hand cannon out right away if you have a shotgun or a sniper out. So definitely good combo for that. Now, let me share some of my thoughts before we get into the live commentary. There's been some discussions going on about the weapon being good or not, where it ranks against the other hand cannons and that the range is a little bit poor. But in my opinion, I believe that the hand cannon is really good and it's in a good spot. Being a 150 RPM, I do not expect it to be able to compete against Ace of Spades and Pulse Rifles. Now, this weapon definitely can compete at range because the burn damage has no damage drop off. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if you end up getting the extra damage perk. You know, you're going to start doing seven damage across the map. Anyways, going along. This hand cannon fits well in its place. You have high handling speed, you can pull it out right away. It's good for mid-range, close-range gunfights. You know, it's a good combatant against Last Word. And if you're that player that likes to push aggressively with your teammates and also keep some range at times, this is going to be perfect for you. But Ace of Spades is the type of weapon that you're kind of the player to anchor, be more at the edges of the map, be really slow paced. So there's a difference right there that's how i see you know both different weapons now personally for me the type of player that i am i love to keep some distance at times use my primary take advantage of my good primary shot against players that you know might not be able to compete and use you know the thorn for that now sometimes though i want to push in be in the action with my teammates team shot follow up with a shotgun as well and that's exactly where thorn shines better than something like ace of spades now compared to a not forgotten you know you can basically say the same thing not forgotten would be better for closer range while a little bit poorer at further ranges and thorn basically would be a little bit better at further ranges while being beaten by not forgotten at close range anyways i do think thorn is up there in the top tier hand cannon department but i still believe that weapons such as last word and not forgotten are still a little bit you know way out of its league in, when it comes to 1v1 gunfights now when it comes to ace of spades last word and you know thorn i think thorn has a really solid chance of being better than them especially whenever you have the perk proc in my mind whenever i think about this weapon it has you know amazing team shot potential take it into competitive you're going to be putting damage into people and they're going to be burning you know causing their uh, recovery to not happen and then allowing other people to finish them off things of that nature so you can see where i'm going with this but anyways i have nothing else to really say about this hand cannon other than that i love it and i'm excited to give some more gameplay for you guys anyways let's get into the live com nothing to help you but your here's a map i haven't been able to have a live come on in a while ultra of flame i really do enjoy playing on this map got some power ammo coming up so we're gonna be playing around that area I'm trying to make sure we deny players from getting their machine gun ammo. Managed to pick off two players there. We're gonna hold mid-map control. Now, you're gonna see me play a little bit more passive. Ooh. He's gonna burn out, hopefully. Well, as I was saying, you're going to see me play a little bit more passive. A lot of players right now are currently working towards their thorn quest, so there's gonna be a lot of primary gameplay. A lot of LMG spam, lots of Spectral Blades and Sentinels, <laughs> not so many Nova Wards, feels bad for them. So we're going to go ahead and respect the primary gameplay that's going to go down. And I try to avoid getting team shotted several times. Go ahead and watch our back here. Player was weak enough, I need to get my health back up before this other one challenges. I see two radar pings, so right now... Seeing as how players are playing pretty good range, you always want to make sure you don't just run in there. Oop. Okay, he burned out. It's a little bit weird that with the melee registration or the melee rubber banding that they were doing. But we did get a burn there. Your legend rose. Let's pop a barricade here. Managed to two tap that guy, but he is not gonna burn out. Actually, teammate manages to put a shot in and help me out finish that one off. And that's why we're gonna have push here pretty aggressively with my teammate. We got two shots left. Hit a headshot. Don't think it's gonna be enough to finish him off. 
That's one. Let's go ahead and get our extra damage here. Like you, I could build he burned out. And shake the to their core. We're going to go ahead and shock on this player here. Together, nice. So we just received the ghost in the night. Stay We're 24 to 11 points so far. We got a pretty decent lead. I'm going to go ahead and play for that power ammo just so I can hold it in the back because I know if my teammates get their hands on it, yes. they're more than likely going to farm several, several LMG kills. Let's go ahead and uh, try to get another kill there. Wasn't able to. After that, I was just going to spam all my shots that were remaining so I can continue the primary gameplay, but unfortunately, it ended up just getting me killed. The player made a really good decision just keeping his distance from me. Let's throw a Thermite there. Get some tags on anybody that ends up walking forward towards that area. We got a 3 tap on this guy. So that's an enemy Spectral Blades. Managed to finish him off. Managed to 3 tap this guy. We're going to get shoulder charge from behind as I attempt to get the extra damage. I was also suppressed, so you notice I started running forward immediately after I heard the Spectral Blades. I did not want this guy to catch up to me and finish me off. Here's some shots on the right side. He might have a gag glitch. Several player swords are left. I think it might be about time we pop one of our own supers. But I'm in no rush. I don't mind playing the remainder of this match with no super kills. It will let the enemy team breathe a little bit and that way we get a more longer match. You know, it lasts longer. We'll be able to enjoy our thorn here. Because as soon as I pop a Sunbreaker, I'm going to generate several kills. Not to mention the amount of orbs I'll probably generate for the team here. Put a couple shots in there. We got an assist. We got some extra damage on here. Hopefully we two-tap this man. Yep, we did. Looking for more players. Wasn't able to hit the third shot as I had jumped onto that little ledge right there. We do have a pretty good lead. Now the only way I see these guys making a comeback is if they decide to pop a couple spectral blades and start farming our team, right? Only five minutes left. That's a four tap right there. We can get some extra bullets here. Let's reload our thorn, just make sure we have our full magazine size here. That player's a little bit weak. He's gonna go ahead and just play it smart. He's pretty weak. Oh, we traded with the shoulder charger once again. Well, what I meant to say was the shoulder charger guy killed me again, because I haven't traded with him except for that one time. Let's throw a grenade right here. I see a sentinel coming towards my direction. I don't want to pop a super you have. Leave me no choice. You leave me no choice. You come after Frosty with your sentinel? Well, I'm going to counter you. Let's throw a hammer there. Throw another one here. And let's go ahead and get our distance now. Reload our thorn. And go back to the primary gameplay like I want. Pop a barricade here and create some space between me and the enemy. Together as one. This guy's gonna burn out, I think. No, he's not. Actually, he did. Was forced to pull out the shotgun right there. Good thing these guys are attempting to get their void primary kills, right? Making it a little bit easy to pull out the shotgun on them. That's a bait. There's two players on this side of the map. Let's provide some support. Probably gonna use a shotgun here. Jump over him. Three minutes. We got some power ammo we have to worry about here pretty soon if we don't push this angle immediately. 
Yeah, there's the LMG. I had a pretty good flank. I was going to be able to pop a melee. And I get some burns there. Potentially a uh, sunspot. And get my health back, but... I was just a little bit too late on that collapse and allowed the enemy team to get their hammerhead ammo. That's a friendly Spectral Blades. He just ended up beating my team, and now it's time for me to run away. <laughs> I think that everybody's spawning on this side, though. Which is probably wise to stay on this part of the map if I want to try to find a couple more players to engage. Now we have a spawn flip. We can go back towards middle. That's why we have Got team shotted by two players right there. As soon as I finished one of them, I was expecting to get a one-on-one. -on -one. But that aggressive play style right there, that confidence ended up working against me. We're halfway over a super. I believe I could have probably gotten like three supers this match. It's one down. Let's go ahead and continue to push forward. Pop a barricade here to get some extra health. Teammate managed to help me out right there a little bit. Thank you. Pop a grenade launcher there. Get that player off that part of the map. Follow through. And I just finished off the enemy team here at this point of the game. We need two more points to finish this match. Nice and strong. One more. Get this Thorn kill. Like a titan of the first pillar. I there we go. GG. That's a Thorn right there, man. I think it's fun. Let's take a look at the score. That was a pretty enjoyable match. We got a, you know, one of those games where I was able to use my primary majority of the time. Dropped a 52 kill game, 9k damage, and a 7.43k AD. I really hope you guys enjoyed that match. Thorn's super enjoyable and fun. Um, but yeah, man. Also, again, thank you for the 50k thousand subscribers on YouTube. I appreciate you guys a lot. See you guys.